of life from the Kabbalah is usually shaped like this with these 10 orbs or sephiroth. Sometimes there's an 11th one. And then the flower of life is like your first exercise in sacred geometry where you draw circles and then vesica pisces and connect them and get these stars showing up. Okay, and so then they can be connected because the uh, oftentimes you will see the tree of life embedded in the uh, vertices of the flower of life configuration. And so it looks like that. Okay, so that'll be relevant to what we're doing here. Okay, so uh, something that will help us uh, later. So we see these two lines extended from the satellite pyramids of Menkari and Khufu, north and south and east and west. They come to what's called the Giza Vector. And this I took from Carl Monk's uh, set of videos on the web, not real uh, high resolution here, but this is uh, his picturing the Giza Vector. And he comes up with a figure for that exact, that exact point there. And some of the things he shows about this Giza Vector, which is a place where there is nothing really other than just sand. I'll show you a, a clip here in a second. But, uh, you know, it gives the Stonehenge latitude because you take the Giza Vector times 3 pi. It gives the 360 sphere volume if you multiply the Giza Vector times 2 pi. Uh, it shows the longest pyramid. It shows Teotihuacan. And it shows by taking the Giza vector and multiplying it by pi cubed, you get actually Cahokia, the largest uh, pyramidal structure in North America. So this point right here is Carl Mung's Giza vector. This is the Giza vector. So, so I actually put some stones there. So if you're on the Giza Plateau, now. look for where the Giza Vector actually is. Okay, that'll come in important later. So Will Wire is a graphics guy you got to follow on Instagram. And so uh, he just did a thing on Da Vinci's uh, Salvador Mundi. And uh, so let's watch this. And my thought was, if we drew a flower of life using this orb as the actual ratio size of the flower of life, meaning each circle within the flower of life is based on, on this size orb. If we draw that out, I wanted to see what things would line up. And there's certainly things that line up here when it's just over the orb, but what was more important to realize was moving it. So drawing it at that size gives me the ratio of the flower of life that I'm looking for. And then what I ended up doing was taking it in and lining up that center um, section, cross intersection, with the speckle highlight on that center jewel that he's wearing. First of all, we frame the, the face with this center circle. We've got this perfect lineup on the tip of the nose. And you'll see as these lines come down from each of these Vesica Pisces here, they actually hit and form where the eyelids land, the, the inner and outer parts of the eyelid. And then of course we've got some strokes that are going through and kind of beside this pupil, but still very much, you know, you can see how placement could be derived from, from those particular things. Also the lips being just inside these curves. Okay, so it seems like Will really grabbed something here. So by taking that, that globe and sort of using it like a key, you know how a map has a key down about where the globe was, and then he centered that uh, on, on that uh, gleaming jewel there and so he came up with what it seems like Da Vinci used as the backdrop with which to create this masterpiece. And so that's related to some of the things that led to this video. So uh, uh, Abby uh, Instagram has done a little uh, art stuff for me. And so uh, this, uh, I gave her this uh, conception of a Vesica Pisces on the Giza Plateau that's there. I mean, we were going like from the center of the Sphinx uh, through through the uh, the center of Khafre and, and uh, Khufu, and it just, these this was one that was derived from Giza. So uh, Abby began to just take what was there and, and basically turn it into what we really think it represents, the, the Eye of Horus. And uh, then we added another eye there uh, over in Giza. You can see that, but the other one comes directly from the sacred geometry we did in Giza. And, uh, you know, it came about from first drawing it like this on, you know, Google Maps and then realizing there is not only a Vesica Pisces there, but it seems to be the Eye of Horus and we just traced it out there. Okay, so here's uh, one of the configurations there. So that point right there is what we call the Holy Shaft. It's an actual shaft on the Giza Plateau. It's near the Osiris Shaft. 
Um, I asked, uh, you know, my, my friends in antiquities there, and they just think that those are Greco-Roman. They don't think that there's any significance to them. But I think it's much older, and here's, here's one of the reasons why. Okay, it's the center of a circle that touches four of the main monuments in very unique and distinct ways. Okay, so now uh, there are some other points we're going to see here when I lay the flower of life on here. But these are related to the holy circle, the ones I'm pointing to there. And then there's some other points there. And then there are some other points that pop up as I begin to lay out the flower of life upon the Giza Plateau. Sort of thinking about what Will did with uh, the Salvador Mundi of uh, Da Vinci. Okay, so there, there you go. Now, now I'm laying the tree of life over, uh, I, I've sort of erased it there, but there was an entire flower of life configuration there. And you see all these major lineups with things we just showed there. Okay. So again, uh, there's the holy shaft right there, and uh, there's the circle that is formed by it. And what's uh, very interesting to me is that you can do this on, on uh, Google Earth. It is exactly 888 feet to a tangent of the Capri Pyramid. It is exactly 888 feet to the Sphinx. It is exactly 888 feet to the southeast corner of Khufu, the Great Pyramid there, and it is exactly 888 feet to Ken Kawes. So we call this the Holy Circle. 888 is a, a, a tremendously significant number. You know, uh, 8 times 111, uh, it's the numerical value of Jesus Christos. Uh, it's, there's a bunch of uh, attributions to this number that just make it really special. Trip 8s, okay, trip 8s. All right, now we lay over the, uh, the Flower of Life now, and so we're just going to look at what some of these connections are. Now, this one is right near the Giza vector. So that it actually, if we could, since these are always pictured with, with globes, the, these tree of life, it, it's, it seems to encompass an area. So the area of that globe definitely, and its sovereignty, it's, the, it's like the base, the base of this configuration. Okay. Then the center point, you know, beauty. It's, it's the exact center. It, 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 it scores right there. But, you know, you wouldn't look at that. You walk by that, past that hole and you think, well, that's nothing. That pit's nothing. And the people in antiquity say, ah, oh, that's just some Greco-Roman thing. But it, it's, there's this hidden beauty. It's the center. And then uh, this one uh, is, there, there's nothing that stands out specifically. Although the Temple of Isis, a lot of times we don't think that Isis is represented in Giza, but there is a Temple of Isis right where that yellow is, and there's also the tomb of uh, uh, one of Khufu's relatives, Kanun Kum. So, so that's a spot there. Now, uh, with these, these red globes, I'm hitting on things where there's definitely something. This is the South Bow Pit right there. That's uh, the southern side of the Great Pyramid. It's actually the western of the two, of the two boats. And actually what's interesting you know, you see that there's a knowledge around, uh, there's a circle around knowledge here. But this is usually the one that's not listed, the, the circle that's not listed. When I said there's 10 or 11 of these, if you take away the globe, the sphere, the circle around knowledge, then you have the 10 that most people have. So if you take it away, oh, interesting, the boat that's there is going to be taken over to the Grand Egyptian Museum and it won't be there. Interesting. And then this one is right at the Valley Temple and, and the uh, uh, tangent with the side of, of Khafre there. Uh, this one is at the northwest socket of the Great Pyramid. The sockets are so important in understanding the relationship of the Great Pyramid to uh, planet Earth. And uh, Victory, that is right at the Sphinx, the Sphinx in the Valley Temple. Foundation, that's Kenkawe's. So, you know... It's that, that's it. I mean, they're, they're just they're all it's hitting hitting pay dirt everywhere. Now, wisdom up there, that one is where I have found a bunch of markings on the eastern part of the of the, of the ground east of the Great Pyramid that show all kinds of things. I've made presentations at Egyptological conferences about the incredible markings that are on the east side of the pyramid in that spot. Now, this one understanding I don't know exactly what's there. I mean, we, I could kind of extrapolate, but that one is kind of a mystery to me, and this one, Splendor, is a mystery. So that this suggests to me there's more homework to be done because since everything else is hitting pay dirt here, it seems like you know there's probably something in those spots. So again, the amazing thing here is I've been led through sacred geometry to see this tree of life on Giza. I did not invent this. I did not impose this. 
I am a student. You know, the American Institute for Pyramid Research, we research pyramids. We seek truth, mystery, and the unlocking of secrets. And that's, this is the kind of thing that we find. This is incredible to me. Sacred Giza. Yes. So there's the tree of life as we have found it meant to be laid down on the Giza Plateau. Okay, now again, there's the... the uh, the, the Sephiroth for, for knowledge, which again, the boat which is there is going to be taken, which was, was there and is now being pieced together, is going to be taken to the Grand Egyptian Museum. Okay, so here is the, the overlay again of the Tree of Life. And so, why 21 degrees? You see how it's not, you know, because we, we talk about how the Giza Plateau is oriented to true north. It's the most perfectly oriented, you know, building the Great Pyramid, you know, on planet Earth, that kind of thing. Well, then why isn't the, 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 the tree of life from the Kabbalah, why is it not 90 degrees straight up and down? Why is it tilted 21 degrees? Okay. And so I got to thinking, well, that's pointing at something. That's pointing at something. And uh, guess what? The Fibonacci, the Fibonacci spiral that goes through all four pyramids, the big three, and then the center satellite of Menkara, that's exactly what it points to. The origin, that line points directly to the origin of the Fibonacci spiral that goes through the three pyramids, which I have always said is a symbol of eternity. And this whole tree of life is meant to connect us to the Ein Sof, to God himself. This is, has to do with the macrocosm and the microcosm getting ourselves right with God, getting, getting in harmony with the universe. That's what the Tree of Life is about. And it's pointing to the origin of the Fibonacci spiral that goes through all four pyramids. Incredible. So there's a, a picture of it there. And so I don't, I'm, I'm not showing you on the screen where that is. You know, I, I, I take certain guests there. I never make it a part of my tour. It's always an excursion. There's some mysteries involved in getting there. But it's called in this picture, Toth's Holy Chamber. The origin of the Fibonacci spiral is called Toth's Holy Chamber chamber okay and that's where this 21 degree angled tree of life points but it doesn't stop there okay because here is a shot i did of google on google earth and you see up at the great pyramid i draw a line uh, that goes through toth's holy chamber the fibonacci origin but it continues down to zawiat el Arian. that in my study of the constellation Orion being brought down to Egypt's soil, that is Betelgeuse. That's the shoulder. That's the shoulder of Orion. The pyramid that's at Zawiat El Arian is the shoulder of Orion. So incredible. This is uh, as you're going to try and get to the pyramid of Zawiat. El Arian, which you'll never get to, by the way, because it's in a military zone. I took this picture looking into the military zone there. Even concessions like Harvard University and other universities that get concessions to areas that the public's not allowed to, they're not allowed to. This hasn't been studied in a long time, but my friend Dr. Rada in Antiquities is trying to get this Zawiat El Arian pyramid out of the restricted military area. It's been that way for a long time. But you know what? One of the last times it was used before it became a garbage pit because the deep hole that's at the pyramid, quote unquote, of Zawiat El Arian has been a garbage pit, a deep pit. But it was used for the largest Hollywood movie ever made at the time, Land of the Pharaohs. So this is the top view. You can see the pit. This is just a blow up of Google Earth, not very high resolution. But look at the Hollywood movie that was made in that pyramid back before it was restricted. They suffered and died to haul their colossal burden across the desert to the River Nile for the final journey to the mighty ramps that flanked the pyramid. But while three million stones were being welded together by time and toil in the golden halls okay. of the palace. So, this is what's revealed at Giza. The tree of life. Okay, so just to say a few quick things, you know, Understanding knowledge and wisdom, shakma dot bina, that's the intellectual triad, the emotional triad, the three middle ones, harmony, strength, loving kindness, and the instinctual triad. Notice the three pyramids here and these three levels, surrender, foundation, victory, the instinct triad, okay? And then it's also divided uh, left and right into masculine, the yang, and the feminine, the yin and the yang. In the middle, the middle pillar is, is uh, more the, the neutral, the mild, the combination, the right, the virtuous relationship 
of these, uh, these qualities. So I'll say just a few things before I end here about, about, about this configuration, which is meant to help us live. It's also meant to help, help, help us to connect to the Ein Sof. Okay, so the crown, sometimes when knowledge is added, as it is here in gray, so there seems to be three, six, nine, ten, there, you know, sometimes it seems like there's 12, uh, excuse me, 11 balls there that when knowledge is added, sometimes they say that Keter, the crown, is zero. That's why there's 11, because that doesn't count, because that's God. That, that shows our connection to God. So from God comes wisdom. From God comes wisdom. From the Almighty, from the Creator comes wisdom. And so when you have wisdom, you know things, you understand things that other people don't. And as you gain, you grow in that understanding, you go across now to understanding. Oh, now you start to have compassion because the, your wisdom has led you to see some things. Oh, that's why he does that. Oh, that's why he's not coming up to me. That you understand some things. And then as you understand, now go through knowledge, follow the path through knowledge to loving kindness. Now you're more merciful. You, because your wisdom led you to some understanding, you've got mercy now, mercy toward people. But then as you do that, if you, if you overproduce that, you're going to find you're going to get stepped on and you're, you're going to be too Pollyannish. And so you gain strength. You gain strength. And, and uh, that strength uh, is, is boundaries too. It's setting limits. It's being a judge when you have to be a judge. You've got to learn to say. And so then we go through harmony or beauty Tiferet, the center in yellow there. Now, you can't try and be beautiful. Beautiful only comes as a result of you doing the other part, seeking wisdom, gaining understanding, showing love and mercy, setting boundaries. Beauty begins to come to you, not because you seek it or want or look at a magazine cover or try and replicate somebody else. That harmony and beauty comes to you as these other virtues are being attained and as you're seeking your higher self. And so you gain the victory and you come to surrender, acknowledging and accepting things as they are. So Giza, the Great Pyramid, the Tree of Life.